In this episode, we talk about the government's ambitious Genome India initiative achieving a significant milestone. We also talk about the ongoing crisis in Manipur. But first, we talk about the Delhi Chalo March. Hi, I'm Shashank Bhargav and you're listening to Three Things, the Indian Express news show. The Delhi Chalo March was called by two farm unions the Kisan Mazdoor Morcha and the Samyuk Kisan Morcha, over a host of demands including a legal guarantee for MSP, among other things. Now, this protest has been on hold ever since the death of 22-year-old Shubkaran Singh last week, allegedly due to firing by the Haryana police near the Khanori border. And this hiatus has actually come as a bit of a respite for the BJP that continues to face anger from the community who are also criticising the Haryana government for filing a zero FIR in the matter. In this segment, Indian Express's Rakhi Jagga joins us to talk about the situation. So Rakhi, we understand that this 22-year-old who died, Shukaran Singh, his cremation took place on Thursday. The farmers had said that they will only cremate the body once an FIR has been filed and his body had been lying in the mortuary since February 21. But then an FIR was filed, but it was a zero FIR. For those who may not know, could you talk about what a zero FIR is? Yeah, actually, on Wednesday evening, they had lodged the FIR at Patra Police Station, which is in uh, Patiala district. At that time, it wasn't mentioned that it is a zero FIR because a simple FIR number was given. But uh, on Thursday morning, uh, the Inspector General Police uh, of Punjab Police, Dr. Sukhchayan Singhil, he issued a statement that uh, we have registered a zero FIR after taking legal advice. So zero FIR is lodged uh, when the place of the crime is not the particular police station where the complainant has gone to get the FIR lodged, but the occurrence of crime is in some other area. And uh, in the case of zero FIR, no regular FIR number is assigned. It is only after the relevant police station receives a zero FIR, a fresh FIR is filed and then the investigation begins afterwards. And in this case, zero FIR has been lodged at Patra Police Station, which is in Patiala. And they have lodged the FIR under IPC 302, which is murder charges, but against unknown persons. And the place of crime mentioned in the FIR is Gadhi village, which falls in uh, Jeend district of Haryana. So ideally, if we understand the definition of zero FIR, so this FIR is going to be forwarded to the Jeend police station. And uh, there is a question mark that whether uh, the Jeend police will actually be interested in taking action against their own security forces or not. So, I mean, a lot of question marks have been raised whether this FIR will serve any purpose or not. And can you tell us how the farm leaders have reacted to this zero FIR being filed? This protest, it's being led by two forums of the Kisan unions. These are Kisan Mazdoor Morcha, whose coordinator is Sarvan Singh Pandher. He is Amritsar based. And the other forum is Sanyukt Kisan Morcha Non-Political. Its coordinator is Jagjit Singh Dalliwal. He is Faridkot based. So, so far, these two leaders, they haven't reacted uh, on the zero FIR thing because they were busy throughout the day in cremation. But there are uh, a number of uh, Sayukt Kisan Morcha, which had led that farm laws agitation. They are not part of this Dilli Chalo campaign, but they are expressing solidarity with the farmers. They had uh, said that this zero FIR, I mean, Punjab uh, government, they are just making a fool of people by lodging a zero FIR and it is not going to generate any results. And uh, it's just an eye wash or it was just done to get the cremation done. So SKM's few farmer leaders, they have said it so. And even Shiromani Akali Dal, they have also said Bikram Majithia, who is their uh, senior leader, he has even said that zero FIR means zero result. And uh, he said that uh, Bhagwant Man, he is just acting as a tout of uh, Haryana government. And Raki, at this moment, what reaction have we seen from the BJP leaders in Punjab? What are the kind of things they are saying? I mean, BJP leaders, for a change, they are quite vocal and they are coming out in support of the farmers. Unlike what they used to do in 2020 and 21, when the agitation against the three farm laws was going on. At that time, the BJP leaders, uh, they were all speaking all in favor of farm laws. Uh, and also, I mean, they were saying that the farmers are not protesting, but in fact, the workers of uh, Congress and Ahmadmi Party are 
protesting when they were facing huge protests. So at this time, uh, the BJP leaders, uh, most of the top BJP leadership is the one who have uh, switched from Congress to uh, BJP. So they are Sunil Jakhad. He is the BJP state president. Captain Amrinder Singh is a national executive member of BJP. So they are quite vocal. And when uh, this Chupkaran, he died on 21. So Captain Amrinder, he wrote uh, on his social media handles uh, that he expressed condolences. And also he said that due action should be taken against the guilty who are behind this incident. Even Sunil Jakhad uh, also wrote that uh, Haryana government, they should have some sensitivity towards this incident and uh, every life matters. And then uh, there was one another farmer uh, who allegedly was beaten up by the Haryana security forces and that uh, farmer's name is uh, Prithpal Singh. At the moment, he's admitted in PGI Chandigarh. He's got multiple fractures. So at that time, Amrinder Singh, he was very, in a tough manner, he had mentioned uh, that it was a barbaric to, I mean, beat up a person like this. And he said that uh, our farmer, he used word, our farmer was beaten up by Haryana security forces. And he said that Manohar Lal Khattar, the CM of uh, Haryana, he should take strict action against the guilty. Right. So the BJP leaders in Punjab are not going against the farmers. They are supporting them. Yeah, so in a way, they are uh, trying to project themselves as friends of the farmers and uh, because the Lok Sabha elections are coming ahead, so that uh, a lot of farmers, they said that uh, they just are trying to be nice to us because they have to come to the villages to campaign. So they are not that angry with the BJP state leadership this time as they used to be 2020 and 21. So BJP leaders, in a way, they are playing a safe game in Punjab. And is that the case with the BJP leaders from Haryana as well? Are they reacting in a similar way? No, no, it's not that the case. BJP leaders in Haryana, they are just speaking the language, what Manohar Lal Khattar, the chief minister, is saying. And although they expressed condolences when this Shubh Karan, he had died, this uh, Nayab Singh Saini is the president of uh, BJP Haryana. So he said, uh, I mean, it's really sad that a uh, youngster, he died. And he said, his inquiry should be done, that what's the reason and all. But otherwise, on their social media handles, they are posting what all things the Haryana government has already done for the farmers and what are they planning to do? Nayab Singh Saini is rather saying that we are already giving MSP on 14 crops in Haryana and then there is no need for the Haryana farmers to protest and he rather said that only the farmers from the select pockets are protesting and not the entire Haryana farmers are protesting and if uh, Haryana security forces they are acting too harsh on uh, the persons who are going in the dharnas so they are not speaking anything against the security forces as well. Recent on Thursday only, Haryana police, they issued a statement that uh, they are identifying all the youngsters who are coming near the borders and if they are doing any property damage or they are trying to break the law and order. So their faces are being identified and they said they will be finding out the details of those persons and the details will be sent to the passport offices, to the embassies so that their passport cancellation, the visa cancellation processes can be initiated in case they have... Uh, I mean, filed any their applications in the visa offices or passport offices. Even for those statements also, the Haryana BJP has not said anything. Contrary to this in Punjab, Punjab only Manish Tiwadi, he is from Congress. So he said that uh, if BJP is issuing such threats, he's a lawyer, Manish Tiwari. So he said that uh, my doors are open. So the Haryana or any youngster who needs any legal help, they can contact me. I will provide them legal help. Right, and earlier the Haryana government was also planning to invoke the stringent National Security Act against the farmers. Could you talk about what made them put that on hold? Yeah, they had invoked NSA. On 21, Shubkaran uh, Singh died. And on 22, notices were pasted outside the houses of maybe 30 or 40 farmer leaders. And the majority of them, they were from Bharatiya Kisan Union, uh, Shahid Bhagat Singh. And this union mainly uh, it's active in uh, Ambala district of Haryana only. Most of the leaders were from that union only. Uh, outside their houses, the notices were pasted. And it, those notices, it hasn't been mentioned NSA has been invoked, but they were informed that NSA has been invoked. There was a lot of hue and cry after this NSA thing. And uh, hours after that, uh, 
maybe on 22 they had invoked and on 23 morning they had withdrawn it and uh, that was an internal message uh, on the same day Amrinder Singh uh, from Punjab he had uh, written a strict message on uh, on the social media that Manor Lal Khattar should act against his security forces maybe the Haryana government uh, they had smelled that this NSA I mean it can prove costlier to them because the, there are number of unions who are not part of this agitation uh, but even when NSA was invoked, even those unions, they got agitated and uh, a kind of a resentment was being felt by them that uh, this can lead to a massive agitation against us. So smelling that uh, agitation and smelling um, that protest from within the people, so then they decided that uh, we should withdraw this, otherwise it will backfire us. Okay, and Raki, the Delhi Chalo March is on pause right now. But do we know how farmers are planning to proceed further? Yeah, earlier they had said that they will be uh, announcing their next plan of action on February 29. But as uh, the cremation uh, took place on February 29, so no plan was announced on uh, that day. Rather, the whole day the unions were busy in that cremation, which was held at Balo village in Bathinda district, which is the native village of uh, that farmer. And uh, there, the farmer union leaders, uh, Jagjit Singh Dalewal and Sarvan Singh Pandir, they collectively announced uh, that uh, the last prayer meeting of uh, this young farmer will be held on March 3. So till that time, um, we are not uh, going to make any further announcement regarding the Lijalo. We will continue to camp here at Shambhu border and uh, Khanuri border only. So next plan of action will be announced on March 3 only. So in a way, we can uh, say that uh, this Delhi Chalo March has been further paused till March 3. So they are going to announce only after the last prayer meeting. And next we talk about human genome sequencing. On Tuesday, the government's ambitious Genome India initiative achieved a significant milestone after researchers completed sequencing 10,000 healthy genomes from different regions of the country. These genomes represent 99 distinct populations and have culminated in the creation of a comprehensive genetic map of India. To talk about the kind of potential this holds for clinicians and researchers, my colleague Niharika Nanda speaks to Indian Express's Anona Dutt in this segment. So Anona, let's start from the basics. What is a genome and what is genome sequencing? So basically, genome is, say, the body's instruction manual that we uh, get from our parents. It's everything that the body needs to sort of create the physical form. And it decides the traits like what color your hair would be, what kind of eyes you would have. Every physical trait is decided by your uh, genetic makeup. And this genetic makeup is actually made of four letters or four bases, A, C, G and T. Now, these four letters actually come together in pairs and a complete human genome has three billion of these pairs. So, uh, when we say we have to sequence a human genome, we have to sequence these three billion base pairs and create and look at uh, the entire instruction manual that you came with. I mean, without getting into too much technicality, but when you have to sequence the genome, three billion is a big number. So, scientists actually break it down into smaller parts and tag them and then sequence it in a sequencer and then join it together to form this complete genome. And this is uh, what the project has done. They've taken the samples from 10,000 human beings and sequenced their instruction manual. Right. And talking about the project that you just mentioned, what is the Genome India project and when did this initiative begin? So basically, Genome India, it's a government funded project, which uh, basically aims to create like a genetic map of the entire country. So what does the genetic profile of our population look like? That's the basic question that this project aims to answer. So scientists from 20 different institutes across the country have collected 10,000 samples from people across the country, healthy people, among the tribal population, it's from the remotest part of the countries and from the cities. So it's a representative mix of our country. It covers 99 distinct population groups from our country. 
and they have now sequenced all these 10,000 genomes and created a huge database where all this information can be stored. This information now can then be used for research purposes, clinical purposes, for creating new targeted therapies or even providing the already available targeted therapy to people who might benefit from this. So there are various uses of this database, but the project essentially looks at creating the map in the first place. Okay, so can you elaborate on these uses? Like, how will this project help the Indian scientists and medical professionals? So, like I said, it will create a genetic map of our country. So now we will know what are the variations uh, that exist in India. There could be certain variations that exist only in India that don't exist anywhere else in the world. There could be certain genetic diseases, the rare genetic conditions probably which exists only in India or very rarely elsewhere in the world. So these are the things that the map will help. So take for example a condition like cardiac arrest, right? Every population has uh, certain uh, risk factors that are common. But in India, there is a particular gene that is present called MYBPC3. So this mutation is present in 4.5% in the Indian population, but not so commonly found in population globally. So it will help, of course, in finding these rare causes of certain diseases. It will also help in the treatment of rare diseases. So for example, if we know what kind of rare disease and how frequently they appear in our population, then we can find treatments that can help these population. It can also help in finding targets, new targets for these uh, conditions. So if we know that this particular mutation causes a certain disease, then we can create a product or a you know pharmaceutical drug, something that can change that mutation and cure that disease. So that is the treatment part. Then of course, if we know that target, it can also help us in diagnosing. So you can create diagnostics or it can help in preventing certain complications. So for example, uh, you can identify resistance indicating variants. What does that mean? Basically, it can tell you whether a person is likely to, you know, be resistant to certain medications, certain anesthetics or certain antivirals. And Arona, we are talking about 10,000 genomes here. How was this data collected and how long did the project take? So basically, when I say genetic data, we need some sort of genetic sample. In this case, it was blood samples collected from, actually the researchers collected it from around 20,000 individuals across the country. And that blood sample has also been saved for future research in these institutes. But then for 10,000 people, they have uh, taken the DNA from within this blood isolated the DNA and then they have sequenced it. Now when I talk about sequencing, at one point, so if we talk about the first uh, human genome that the uh, sequence was completed in 2003 and it took 13 years to complete the first sequence. But the technology has completely changed now. It's so much easier to do it and a complete human genome with all the quality checks and everything in place can be completed say in five days now. So the sequencing itself did not take too much time. It took uh, the scientists about three to four months to sequence the 10,000 genomes. But what took time was collecting the samples from distant areas and, uh, you know, in populations who live in very isolated places. So that was what took a uh, majority of the time. The project was approved in 2020. And of course, there were delays because of the pandemic. And finally, this week, the whole 10,000 genome uh, sequencing was announced that it has been completed. And have similar projects been conducted elsewhere? Sure. So countries other than India have also been uh, doing this because it makes sense to have a population based, you know, map of what are the different types of variations that exist in the population. That there are projects similar to this in, say, UK and United States, and they are sequencing a higher number. So about a uh, lakh sequencing is what I think they have targeted. But even the 10,000 number is quite a big achievement uh, seeing that we announced our first complete human genome in 2009 and then we have been doing it but in smaller projects but this is the first time we have done a very big representative sample and of uh, completely healthy people. 
and anona tell us something that makes this project unique this uh, project right now it covers 99 distinct populations from across india but our population actually has a huge uh, diversity with 4600 distinct population groups and uh, the practice of endogamy or marrying within the same community has resulted in these groups actually preserving a lot of their genetic makeup so it will also sort of provide a very unique uh, perspective like uh, in most global databases you would not see so much variation but uh, we do have 4600 different groups 99 of which have been covered by this project and in the end we talk about manipur the manipur government has sought assam rifles assistance to maintain peace and restore public confidence in six violence hit districts yesterday an order issued by the imphal west district magistrate highlighted reports of significant breaches of law and order notably instances of mob violence this order follows recent events including a torchlight rally on wednesday night during which thousands of women in different parts of the imphal valley demanded scrapping of the suspension of operations agreement between the center and the cookie militant groups on the 27th of february around 200 men with arms vandalized and fired upon the residence of additional acp m amit singh in the imphal east district leading to singh's abduction and subsequent rescue by security forces in response to the escalating situation other districts have also demanded the deployment of assam rifles to maintain peace and security Meanwhile Manipur Chief Minister N Biren Singh yesterday informed the assembly that 10023 FIRs were registered in connection with the ongoing sectarian violence in the state of these 38 cases were handed over to the CBI and 13 to the NIA he added that these arrests were made in 495 cases in addition to this he also said that over 280500 people were detained under the preventive detention act and that many were also released as no evidence was found to prove their involvement in the crimes you were listening to three things by the indian express today's show was edited and mixed by suresh pawar and was produced by niharika nanda and me shashank bhargav if you like the show then do subscribe to us wherever you get your podcast you can also recommend the show to someone you think will like it share it with a friend or someone in your family it's the best way to get to know about us you can also tweet us at express audio and write to us at podcast@indianexpress.com at